Bhaktivedanta Manor, we have many, many people give class, different person every day. Sometimes they ask young devotees like myself or Jamastami Prabhu, he's also given class there. But many young devotees give class, so I, what should we do if someone asks us to give class there? I mean, we're very, coming here, it's obvious that we're not qualified. We can see very clearly that we're not qualified to do this. But there, it's very common that young devotees give class. It's very common. Yes, thereby giving opportunity to devotees to speak in one sense. But one who will speak, he must know the philosophy very well. He should prepare to answer all questions, philosophical questions. Otherwise he will feel embarrassed. Yes. Isn't it? Or he will speculate. Yes, speculate <laughs> like that. Yes, sir. It seems, it seems everybody does this. Right? Yeah, because only speculation has <laughs> been <laughs> No, not many people. Have you heard such answer from somebody? Uh, I think I confused the story with some other first time. You know, for the authority, you know, for the authority of what he has said, understand? Well, sometimes that opportunity may be given, but he should speak to the this devotees there, not to the public. If, 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 if some public person asks some question, you cannot answer, what will happen? Hmm. Yeah. And you give some wrong answer, then how dangerous it is. It's very common though because not many people know the Shastra in, uh, it seems, very few. Yeah. You hear all sorts of things. We hear so many different things. Mm. It's very, sometimes the classes we hear are very disturbing for the mind sometimes because there's so much arguing. Well, well, not Prabhupada, always, but You see, like when that. Prabhupada was there, he was allowing his uh, disciples to speak, but Prabhupada was sitting there hmm. and Prabhupada was guiding. So, if they commit some mistake, then and there Prabhupada corrected them. That was your training, giving training. I have seen that. Once he asked me to speak in Bombay, in Hindi, you understand? I was just a few days I was with him, just a few days, you see. He told me, go, go with you, speak in Hindi, you understand? So I spoke what I have heard, <laughs> and he appreciated me much. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> just uh, get a portion of this book, the special master mercy. Let me do some other devotee, let him speak in the evening class. I was sitting there, so I correct. No, this is this, like that, say like that. It's training. So it should be like that, say, when somebody gives class. For example, in England, mm -hmm. and a senior devotee ah, should be there. Should be there, yes, should be there. That's the process. Sometimes we see nowadays it's quite uh, fashionable or quite a common practice when they discuss, debate some point or issue, mm -hmm. philosophical or could be anything. They quote these new letters which have just been published, and not so much the scriptures. That's yes. and when you argue, but this is. These are letters, although they are Prabhupada's letters, but you cannot really quote them in every instance. So no. they say you are... Uh, you see, what Prabhupada has written is letters. Is it uh, something different from Sastric Indian sense? Prabhupada must say from Sastra. Hmm. It is based on Sastric Indian. That is Sadhu. Sadhu says from Sastra. Sadhu never says something from his mind, converting something, or manufacturing something. He must quote previous authority and Shastra. So Prabhupada, while Prabhupada will say something new, which is not in Shastra, but previous authorities are not say. That is not. You may quote Prabhupada's letters, but you must understand it, understand its purpose. Not, I, I say we have two types of considerations. One is apparent consideration and another is absolute consideration. Apart vichar, tattva vichar. But 